In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five different smart home buttons that I make use of in my setup. We're going to be doing a bit of a compare and contrast with each button, and I'll also be sharing with you my use case for the buttons, as well as a quick setup. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Before we get into this, I should probably clarify what I'm actually classing as a smart home button. So for me, a smart home button is just that. It's one singular button. If it's got more than one button, I'm calling it a scene remote. I will have a video coming out on scene remotes. So if you're not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted when that video comes out. The buttons shown in this video aren't in any particular order, but they are all buttons that I personally make use of. I've got some Bluetooth ones, some Zigbee ones, and some Wi-Fi ones. And if there's a particular one with a particular protocol that you wanna check out, then be sure to make use of those chapters in the description below. Starting us off then, we've got the Amazon Echo button. Now, this button is actually the very first smart home button that I ever got. It's created by Amazon, and the idea behind it was to just have a simple to use button that you could click to run Alexa routines. Originally, you used to be able to pick these up as a two pack directly from Amazon for about 18 pounds, but it looks like Amazon's now discontinued them. So if you wanted to buy one, you'd need to buy one either from a reseller or from somewhere like eBay. The setup for these things is super simple. You simply say, Alexa, add my button, and then you press and hold the button on the top for about 10 seconds. It will flash orange and then the Echo will discover it. Just above me there, you'll find a bunch of different Echoes that the button's compatible with. The button will connect to any of those Echoes using Bluetooth. And once it's connected, you'll be able to open up your routines and you'll be able to use the button click as an action. The functionality of this button is quite limited. You're limited to the Alexa app and also just that singular press. So there's no double press or long or short hold. I have seen a few projects online where people have made modifications to the button or done some other clever wizardry in order to get more use out of it. But that's a lot of effort for this particular button. The button's powered by two AAA batteries and when you press the button, you'll get a blue confirmation light followed by a green light, which will let you know that your routine successfully ran. The button looks and feels very plasticky and almost toy-like and it's designed to look like one of those old style game buzzers. And this was actually one of the marketing points for the button when Amazon used to sell it. Now you may also notice there that that top light can be multiple different colors, but this isn't something that Amazon ever gave access to within the Alexa app. And now that it's no longer being manufactured, I guess it's something that we'll never see. The button's designed to be placed flat on the table and there's not really any other way of mounting it. As the battery compartment's held in by a screw, you'd be blocking access to this if you stick anything on the back of it. So it's a big chunky button that you can connect to supported echoes using Bluetooth and then use those button presses to trigger your Alexa routines. So that's what it is, but how do I make use of this thing? Well, it's obviously going to be with Home Assistant. So within Home Assistant, I've got a Wake on LAN switch set up. So when I press that switch, it's going to turn on a set PC or set device. I then just expose that switch to Alexa, which allows me to then control it with my voice, or in this case, to control it with the smart home button. So Alexa will see that switch, and then I can use that switch within an Alexa routine. And for my actual setup, I've got an Alexa routine that just tells that switch to turn on. And then I also use some Alexa text to speech to actually tell me that the machine's been turned on. And I do this just as like an auditory prompt, just in case I happen to not be looking at the button. Turning on your PC, sir. There's lots of different methods for setting up Wake on LAN and there's a few different integrations and other bits that you can use. But this particular way is the way that's worked for me and I've just always used it with the Echo button. And if it's not broken, don't fix it. And it works well. We can use the button to trigger automations. We can turn on scenes. We can run scripts. But we can't get any information back from the button. So we can't get any information such as the button's battery level. And we can't find out when the button was last pressed. But... This is a great way to repurpose a button like this and have it connect to Home Assistant. Next up, we've got the Acara Wireless Mini Switch. This smart button actually happens to be my favorite. Not only does it come in a sleek, stylish form factor, it's also very reliable and easy to control. And what I mean by easy to control is the button that you press on the top has got a very nice tactile feel. So when you press it, you know you pressed it, so there will be no accidental presses or mispressing. You can pick some of these up directly from Acara or from Amazon for just under £20. And if you don't mind waiting for delivery, you can actually pick them up way cheaper from places like AliExpress. But one thing to note, if you do buy them from AliExpress or other sites like that, you will get the Chinese branded version. So 
they'll come in a different packaging you'll get the all white packaging instead of the european white and blue packaging but they are the exact same product you'll just be getting the chinese branded version and you'll have chinese instructions on the back of the button you'll find some 3m sticky tape which can be used to mount the button to most surfaces you'll also find the battery compartment housed in that cr2032 battery on the top of the button you'll find a small sync button and that button's used to add your device to your zigbee network if you're interested in the full setup process for actually adding this button into Home Assistant, then go and check out this video I did a little while ago. In that video, I run through the full setup process for getting this button into Home Assistant, along with covering a range of other Recaro products and devices. Once that button's added into Home Assistant, you can start writing automations to trigger when the button's pressed. So for example, you could trigger an automation on a double press or when the button's battery level changes. Being Zigbee based, these buttons use barely any energy. I've got a few of them scattered around the house that get used daily and they've been going for well over a year and they're still going strong. So how do I make use of this button? As I said, I've got a few of these scattered around the house, but one of my favorite uses for one of these buttons is an easy to access light switch. In my four year old's room, I've got one of these placed lower down on the wall. This allows my daughter to actually press the button to control the light switch as she's not able to reach the main light switch yet. Moving on then, we've got the Sonoff wireless switch. The Sonoff mini switch is another Zigbee based button and just like the Akara button, it can be added straight into Home Assistant. This thing offers three methods of input. You've got a single press, a double press, and also a long press. And also if you add it into Home Assistant, you can view some extra information about it, such as being able to view the device's battery level. This thing is powered by a CR2032 coin battery and you can also expect it to have quite a long life due to it being Zigbee based. Out of all the buttons that we're looking at today, this one is by far the cheapest, which doesn't make it the worst, but also doesn't make it the best. Here in the UK, you can pick up this button on Amazon for just under £10. And again, if you don't mind waiting for the delivery, you can find it on other places on the internet for cheaper than that. Adding the Sonoff switch is pretty much just like adding any other Zigbee switch. You just open up whichever Zigbee manager you're using. So in this case, we're using Decons, and then you just click Add New Switch. Put the switch into pairing mode and then it will find it. The Sonoff mini switch has actually got a bit of a strange design and if you're familiar with the Sonoff Zigbee bridge then you'll actually notice that the mini switch looks like a miniature version of that hub. On the front of the button you'll find what I think is supposed to be a fingerprint etched into the faceplate and on the back you'll find four corner markers which mark out where the 3M tape should go. With the 3M sticky tape, you can pretty much mount this button anywhere, but Sonoff only provides you with one set of sticky tape, so you're going to want to make sure you decide on the position that you're going to mount the button in before you stick that tape down. I'm not a big fan of the clickiness of this button, and unless you hit it dead centre on the button, the button won't press properly, so sometimes if it feels like it's clicked when you've pressed on one of the corners, it actually doesn't register as a press, so you have to hit it pretty much directly on that fingerprint for it to actually count. So what am I doing with this button then? I actually use the Sonoff button as my kettle button. In my kitchen, I've got one of Smarter's eye kettles. And if you're actually interested in this particular kettle, I've got a review video coming out for it in the next couple of weeks. So be sure to look out for that. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the kettle because that's not what this video is about. But basically it's a smart kettle, but it currently doesn't have any Home Assistant support or any hacks integrations, which is where my button comes in. On a single press of the button, it turns my kitchen lights blue and it turns on an input boolean called morning tea. The idea behind this is that before you go to bed, you'll fill the kettle up with water and then you'll just press that button, which will let Home Assistant know that there's water in the kettle ready for the morning. And the blue lights are just more of a visual thing to let you know that it's been registered. In the morning, this is then picked up by a node red flow, which will check at six o'clock in the morning to see if that input boolean's turned on. If it is, it will then turn it off and it will then send an if request to actually turn the kettle on. In that if request, I do also pass some extra parameters such as keep the kettle warm for an hour. So if by some miracle, the kids aren't awake at six o'clock in the morning, I'll still be able to come downstairs and the kettle will still be nice and warm. For the double press, I did used to have this assigned as kettle keep warm. So when you double press the button, it would tell the kettle to stay warm for an hour. But most recently, I've actually changed this to just toggle the kitchen lights on and off. And for the long press, I also have this assigned to a kettle automation. So when you long press it, it's going to turn on an input boolean called home tea. And the idea behind this one is that if you know that your partner's going to be home shortly, or if you're leaving and coming back and you want the kettle to be ready for when you're back, you just simply fill up your kettle, do a long press on the button. And then when home assistant detects that you've entered the home area, it will automatically turn the kettle on. 
The iKettle does have some of these location based features and it can also use if to do some of its triggering. But again, this is all external from Home Assistant. And in my testing, I found that the Home Assistant updating is way faster than smarter, which is why I'm having Home Assistant do all the processing. Moving on to our next button then, and it's the Philips Hue button. This one's another little Zigbee button and here in the UK, you can pick them up on Amazon for just under 20 pounds. Like the Akara and Sonoff buttons, this button is powered by a CR2032 battery and it will also connect directly to Home Assistant. Connecting this button is going to be the exact same as the two previous buttons. You're going to put it in pairing mode and you're going to open up your Zigbee software and just add a new device. The Philips Hue button should then automatically be discovered and be added to your list of devices. In my personal opinion, this button has by far the best mounting options out of all the buttons that we're going to look at today. For a start, the back plate's magnetic, meaning it's going to stick to any magnetic surface. With the switch, you'll get a wall plate which can stick to a wall using 3M tape. The button can then attach to the wall plate magnetically. You also get a mini mount, which is like a small magnetic coin, which you could stick to a wall or another surface that isn't magnetic in order to stick the button to it. And again, as it's magnetic, you can stick it to any magnetic surface. So if you wanted to, you could just stick this on your fridge. This button's got a very nice clicky feel to it and it offers the single press and long press as input actions for the button. The internal button controls are housed within a rubber exterior, which has got a very nice premium feel to it, which is something that we've learned to expect from a Philips Hue product. While this rubber exterior does look nice and has a nice finish, it does make it a bit fiddly when you want to try and get the battery out. Now we're not doing any crazy kettle automations with this button, but I am using it in the upstairs bedroom in order to control the lights. On a single press, I have the button turn on the bedroom light, and on a long hold, I have it turn on the bed headboard lights. I have the mini mount stuck onto my bedside table, which gives me the option of mounting the button on the wall or on my bedside table. This is useful if you want it really close to you, so if you want to get into bed and don't want to use the Amazon Echo or the Home Assistant app, you can just press the button right next to you. Okay, onto our final button then, and we've got the Shelly Button 1. The Shelly Button 1 really does have the most going for it. It uses Wi-Fi to communicate. It's got an inbuilt rechargeable battery, which Shelly estimate as 3000 actions, which is quite a lot of button presses if you think about it. It can also be directly powered by USB. So if you want to plug it in and just have it on all the time, you can do. It uses color hints in the sense of the light ring. So the little light ring will change color depending on an action or an error. It's also super compatible and makes use of MQT and has the full Shelly REST API. As with all other Shelly products, there's a web interface that's hosted on the device, so you can further configure the device from the web. In terms of size, the Shelly Button 1 has a very similar footprint in comparison to the Akara and Sonoff buttons. The setup for this thing was an absolute pain. So originally I tried to make use of the Shelly integration. So when you actually plug the button in, you get a little pop up for the auto discovery and it'll tell you that it's found the Shelly button. But when I actually set that all up, I could see the battery level of the Shelly button, but I could never actually get any of the automations to run on any of the button presses. I did try a whole bunch of different things to get the button to work using the standard integration and the button is using the latest firmware version, but I just couldn't get anything to work. Now, I asked around a bit in the community and somebody pointed me in the direction of the Shelly's discovery script. In a nutshell, what the script does is it adds MQTT discovery support for Shelly devices in Home Assistant. Now, I'm not gonna be going through the full setup and installation of this, but all the details you'll need in order to get this set up and running are on the Shelly discovery GitHub page, and I'll have that linked in the description below. If you are interested in seeing me do a video tutorial on this, then also let me know in the comments and I'll gladly create one. This script supports a whole bunch of different Shelly devices, so pretty much any Shelly device you have will work with this script. Using the discovery script, you're able to access so many more entities that are not available in the standard integration, and it also just works. Currently on Amazon in the UK, it's just over £30 to actually buy one. If you're in the UK and you buy it directly from Shelly, you can pick it up for about €22, Euros, which is about £18 or so. The Shelly Button 1 doesn't have any mounting options, so there's no 3M tape or anything like that. I think it's designed to just be sat on a table or just be placed on a shelf. It does, however, have a slot for a keychain, so if you wanted to, you could attach this to some keys or to a bag or something. For the last time in this video then, let's have a quick look at how I'm making use of this button. So my current use for this particular button is to enable and disable my security camera recording. So on a single press, it will turn off all the camera recording, so it turns off the video and the audio, and then on a double press, it will turn them back on. 
Now, using Wi-Fi, it does take a couple of seconds for it to actually all go through. And you can see there on the button that it did the little flash and just takes a second to go through. So it's not as quick as the Zigbee buttons, but it does work. And there we go. That's five smart buttons that I make use of in my smart home. If you've got any recommendations for some cool automations to run with smart buttons or any smart buttons that weren't covered in this video, then let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already and you want to see more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. As a Patreon member, you gain access to some exclusive content, videos and giveaways, as well as directly supporting my channel. If you're interested in any of those things, then there'll be a link to my Patreon in the description below. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.